Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Tiana Smith and I document my fertility journey, um, some house stuff, lifestyle stuff on this channel. So if that's something you are interested in, please stick around and consider subscribing. Uh, today I owe my subscribers an update on my condition. Uh, so yeah, if you wanna get caught up, you can watch some of my uh, previous videos. If you are caught up and you're like, girl, where have you been? Just keep watching. And I'll let you guys, you know, in on my boring, crazy life. Okay guys, so recovery. As most of you guys know, I had an open myomectomy um, in September. It was actually September 16th to be exact. Um, it has been over five weeks now and I, I can't say that I've been too busy to update you guys. To be honest, I have not been busy at all. I've not done anything. Um, I just haven't, I just haven't jumped on. So um, I do have a little bit of an update for you guys. Um, I did take notes, so if you see me looking down, I do want to kind of make sure I'm not missing anything. Honestly, nothing really happened, which is why um, I haven't been on here to update you guys. I did start blogging, vlogging like in the beginning when I first got home, but what I realized quickly is that I wasn't really in that much pain in my lifestyle other than not being able to really go anywhere. My home lifestyle didn't change that much. Um, I was not confined to my couch or my bed like I thought I was going to be. So, which is good. Like, praise God. Uh, so, for recovery, um, I guess let's just start with my open myomectomy. Those who do not know, um, I had a fibroid or fibroids in my uterus. My doctor said that they were actually attached to the backside of my uterus. So, um, I was able to get those removed. If you watched my last video, I did insert pictures of what they took out, which was pretty cool. If you ask me, I thought it was pretty cool. It was pretty gross, but it was pretty cool. Um, so I did get that removed. I am feeling a lot better. Uh, the first two weeks after being home, um, not much happened. I thought I was going to be in a lot more pain. Like I said, I was not. Uh, they prescribed me oxycodone. Um, some nausea medication, as well as some um, 800 milligram ibuprofen. Um, if you guys know me, I know I don't like taking medicine. Like that's not my thing. My doctor knows that. And she like, let me know like, hey, you do not want to be in pain. So once you get to like the pain level, <laughs> like you like feel in your, it's really hard to control your pain once you let it go out of control. So she told me, you know, make sure you're taking your medicine. I think it was every six hours um, or every eight hours. I don't really remember. It's been a while. Um, but the time frame that they called for it was like, make sure you're taking your medicine consistently because you don't want to lose control um, of the pain. So I did that, but only with the 800 milligram ibuprofen. I did not take any of the oxycodone or the nausea medication. Um, it just didn't seem necessary. I wasn't in that much pain. I was just a little bit sore around my incision site and then a little sore underneath um, my belly button at the time. So I did that the first two weeks. I only, not even the full, first full two weeks, I think I only took the ibuprofen for about a week and a half before I just stopped taking it completely. Um, that was mostly because my birthday was on September 27th and I really wanted to drink. So I knew that if I was still on ibuprofen, I could not drink. So I made sure um, to kind of take it easy those first two weeks so that I can just get off my medication and then have a nice birthday and, you know, relax after that. So I think I took ibuprofen maybe once after my birthday. Um, for week three, I started to have a little bit more energy and therefore I was like, okay, I'm going to go for my walks and just kind of start moving. And it was, it was a bust. Let's just say that like in your brain, especially when you're not sore, you're just like, you've got all this energy and you're like, cool, bet I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. When in reality, you go to do those things and you just can't do it. So I remember going for my first walk by myself and I'm like, cool, I'm going to go, you know, to the corner, see how far, you know, see how I'm feeling and then go a little farther, blah, blah, blah. I made it literally two houses down and I stopped and I was out of breath. I was like, I can't do this and I don't want to get too far and not be able to make it home. So I turned around and came back home because I couldn't do farther than like two houses. Then I tried to walk on the treadmill. Now I'm not cleared to work out yet, um, but 
I thought, okay, well, I'm, I can't go outside. Maybe if I just walk super slow on the treadmill, it'll be fine. I think I got up to a 1.2 speed and I was like, okay with that. I did that for like five minutes. I tried to go to 1.4 guys and I nearly died. Like it was too fast. I was like 1.4, seriously? So that just gives you a little insight as to like how out of it, how out of shape I have to be like in this point right now because I haven't been doing anything. Like 1.4 was the fastest I can walk in week three. Um, at the end of week three, like going into, I think it was like almost week four is when I had my first uh, doctor's appointment, um, my post-op appointment. So I went and um, she like checked my incision. She said everything looked good. She took my tape off. She pushed on my stomach. Everything was fine. Um, and I was cleared to drive. So at three weeks, I was able to like take myself somewhere, which was nice because I was really uh, getting a little antsy in this house. So even though I couldn't walk too much or walk too far, at least I can get out of the house for a second. Um, just like if I had to grab something at Walmart, I would just walk slow, grab it, come home. Like it wasn't anything big, um, but it was nice to be able to get a little taste of freedom, like closer to that four week mark. So that was really nice. Um, during the four week mark, like during the week four, I was just bored because I started feeling a lot better once I hit four weeks. Um, I knew I couldn't overdo it because I know that at one point I remember sneezing really hard and not having enough time to like catch my stomach. Oh my God. It felt like my insides had like ripped apart. So I knew I still needed to take it easy, especially with whatever's going on internally. But like, I just had so much more energy. I was walking much faster and I just, I wanted to do things and I knew I couldn't. So week four was just like torture. I literally sat on my couch and watched like every movie, every Disney movie I could think of. Um, I was just, yeah, it's just, I was pretty bored. Like, I think I text my neighbors like an obscene amount of times. Like, what are you, like, how are you? What are you doing? Like, I go for a walk like I just needed to get out of the house um, now I am in the fifth week or like going into the sixth week um, and I have started working so I am back at work I did just have my first like kind of short week at work um, that was interesting I can say I am tired I know I look tired I feel tired it was it wasn't hard. I didn't do anything like physical, just sitting at my desk all day, even sitting up like this, like in a chair started to make my stomach very sore. I would have to like kind of lean back um, every now and then or just walk around um, for a couple minutes because my stomach was getting sore just sitting at my desk. Um, but so far, so good. Work was OK. You know, I didn't pass out didn't fall asleep, didn't hurt myself, didn't, you know, didn't do anything crazy. Um, so it was nice to get out of the house. I don't necessarily wish that I could get out of the house and go to work, but you know, that's how it worked out and, and it was fine. It was fine. So I did do my first short week at work and that is completely over. So that's pretty much where I am with my recovery journey. I'm not on any medication. I'm back at work. Um, and that's it. Uh, so what I wanted to talk to you guys about um, after kind of just getting you a heads up on your on my recovery and also if you guys have had this surgery and you've had different things um, kind of go on with you, I'm curious to see like how long you were stuck on the couch and all this stuff because I did a lot of research before and watched a lot of YouTube videos and I mean there were some women that were like struggling and I just, that just was not my experience. So. I'm curious if you've had this surgery, like how did, how did yours go? Um, but moving forward, so we're past the surgery. Now it's like, okay, what's next? And that is where things get a little bit tricky for me. Um, I feel like my priorities have just changed so, so much. Um, I know before surgery, we were on like track to baby Smith and that was number one. Um, but after having the surgery and then just being able to just kind of calm down, not have the pressure of like just trying to get pregnant and all of these things, like we, I think 
our next priority is us. So like, and by us, I mean my husband and I. Um, my number one priority right now um, is going is is my marriage because I think that being in I don't know, being infertile or going through infertility just puts a huge strain on your marriage. And we've been trying for about um, maybe almost two and a half years, and it's just it's a lot. It's a lot um, between like before I was like planning before we you know seek help it was just like constantly having sex at certain times and like having to schedule things and then um going to all the doctor's appointments once we did go and like seek help and it's just it made everything very structured and i don't know i sterile and just not what it should be and i feel like it's just gone on a little bit long and now i can feel the tension like between us like the connection isn't quite there um and so that's my number one priority so to start there like honestly i don't know where i'm starting because the life doesn't come with a freaking manual but (laughs) you just kind of go with the punches the first thing that i did was buy a book i did buy the book um the four laws of love so i go to gateway church uh when i can um because the pandemic i have not actually physically been in gateway church but um i do go to gateway here in texas Um, And one of the pastors um, is Pastor Jimmy Evans, and he um, is like a big marriage Christian, like marriage counselor. He does like, um, I believe he has a podcast, a TV show. He writes books, stuff like that. But he's also um, a pastor at our church. So I did purchase his book, The Four Laws of Love. I can show it to you guys here. Um, So far, I am about halfway through. I'm really enjoying this. Um, I know that there are a lot of resources out there when it comes to like marriage, marriage counseling. Um, but I did want to start or not start, but like focus on faith based like counseling. Um, so I am reading this book, The Four Laws of Love. I absolutely love it so far. I've only gone through half. I did also um, see Pastor Evans uh, speak on this book, too. So I know a lot of the material that's in it, even though I haven't quite you know made it to those chapters. Um, but I do highly recommend this. I think it was like 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, so I'm reading this book. Um, I'm also listening to some podcasts and one podcast that I really enjoy, um, that I think is good for anybody. Same with this book. Like it's not necessarily if you feel like you're having, you know, trouble in your marriage. I think there's just a lot of valuable information about marriage period, um, in this book, as well as on the podcast that I'm listening to. Um, the podcast, I'm actually, I'm not, I'm not actually listening to it on Spotify right now. I'm listening to it on YouTube. Um, but it's, the channel is Dave and Ashley Willis. Um, I really, really enjoy their podcast. So if you guys are interested at all in just listening to different things, like their perspective, their biblical perspective on marriage, and like they literally cover any topic that you can think of, like they've covered it. Um, it is Dave and Ashley Willis, and they're on YouTube. Um, they also are a part of the EXO Marriage like franchise. I think that they do the conferences as well, you know, with um, Pastor Jimmy Evans. So um, you can always look into the EXO, I think it's EXO Marriage um, on YouTube as well. And then they have even more podcasts and resources and different couples that you can kind of uh, pick through if you want to listen to more podcasts about that. Um, the last thing that I know that I have on my to-do list when it comes to, um, kind of focusing on my marriage is the EXO Marriage Conference. Um, because of the pandemic, we're not exactly sure if it's going to happen on Valentine's Day next year. I guess that's when they have it every year. I've never attended. Um, but I would like to go in February if at all possible. I know that they will be broadcasting it. Um, if they don't have it live, I'm, I'm sure that they'll be, um, broadcasting it over the the internet um, if we can't physically be there but I would like to physically be there so we'll see um, how that goes but hopefully come Valentine's Day I will be able to go to the EXO marriage conference so we'll see that's kind of where I am now Um, just I have to switch up my priorities because number one obviously outside of God like number one is my marriage so Everything else just has to be kind of on the back burner, and that's just where we are right now. 
Um, my number two priority, which you would think would be baby, but it's really not. Um, I have to do something about my body. So having this surgery and having to like sit and do nothing for a month has just been, it's been awful. Like I just, I need to move. So, um, I'm, you know, I'm having trouble like getting my pants on because I have like little to no muscle in my stomach after they've been sliced through me. Um, so I would like to just start moving. Um, I currently am not cleared to work out yet. I do have to wait until my six week mark. Um, and then I have to start slow and kind of build myself up. So, um, I will hit six weeks here in about four or five days. Um, and I'm going to start with just kind of like walking at an incline on my treadmill. And then as of November 1st, I did find a program on Pinterest that has like different exercises to do every day um, in combination with like 20 minutes of cardio and then whatever they say. Um, and I'll try and include that um, on the screen here um, because I think that it's going to be good for me because it looks like the workouts kind of increase slowly. I think the first day you're doing like maybe 10 squats, then 20 squats, then, you know, and it slowly builds you up because I definitely just need to get back into it um, and I need structure. So a friend of mine, we're going to just kind of work through um, this workout program together just for the month of November, just to kind of get me moving again because... My clothes don't fit and I feel just disgusting. Like I've never sat <laughs> and not did anything for so long in ever. So um, I definitely just want to get moving again. Um, so that is priority number two. Priority number three is then getting back to baby Smith. Um, I was advised that because um, of the surgery, my uterus can't handle a pregnancy for at least six months, which would bring us to May 2021. Um, my infertility specialist, endocrinologist, whatever, um, he did advise that if I wanted to start the IVF process before May, I could do that. I could do the shots and the egg retrieval. They just wouldn't be able to complete transfer until after May 2021. Um, so that is still on the table. Um, I don't know when we're going to jump back into IVF. Um, if we're going to do like the egg retrieval early and the transfer later, or if we're going to try and do it all at the same time frame. I, I, we haven't discussed that yet. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, when that's going to happen. I do know that because I got this giant fibroid removed, um, even though my doctor said they don't believe that that had anything to do with us not being able to get pregnant, who really knows? So we do want to try naturally first before we go back into IVF. Um, so we'll see how that goes because I'm not supposed to like get pregnant at all until April, May time. Like that's like the soonest. So we definitely kind of want to try naturally and then maybe try naturally for two to three months. I don't know. Then go into IVF. I don't know like so that whole part is kind of a big unknown for us right now um and we have time to decide since technically well as of right now i can't even have sex so there's that and then <laughs> we have time because i'm not supposed to get pregnant for at least six months so we'll we'll figure that out but again i just need to focus on some of my other priorities at least through um the end of the year early next year so yeah, that's kind of it that's going on with me. Feels like a lot. Um, now that I'm back at work and ugh, I can move around, I need to clean this house. There are so many things that I need to do. I just need to find the energy to do it. Um, but I'm very, very happy to report that everything went smooth. My recovery went smooth. I feel great. Um, work is making me a little tired, but other than that, I am doing very, very well. So I just want to thank you guys for all of the support and all the people checking in on me and just like writing in the comments on my videos. Like you guys have been really, really awesome. So thank you guys for sticking around on this journey and who knows what my next video will be about. Um, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. I'll make sure that I keep you guys updated on you know, what's kind of going on over here. If it takes a little, a little detour, you know, I know you guys will be along for the ride. So 
Thank you guys for stopping by and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.